Wonderful. Welcome back. I told you guys I have someone from diaspora, right? These guys, inflation, although they catch them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and again, he's, he's into the Bitcoin business. Tolu is the CEO of Vasos Trade. You're welcome to this show, Tolu. How are you, my brother? I'm fine. Good evening. How are you, everyone? Yeah, we're doing well. Everyone is doing well. Um, real quick, Tolu. How is the weather in the UK right now? It is hot here in Nigeria, but we're in the studio. We're enjoying our AC sha. What's the weather like over there? A bit cold, yeah, but it's because I'm inside, so that's why I had to come with a shirt, with a t-shirt. But it's right outside. It's all right. It's all right. Good to have you here. Real quick, um, share with us um, your bio data for the people that are, are just seeing you for the first time. Your name, uh, what you do, real quick. My name is Tolu Williams, and I'm the founder and CEO of Vassal Street. Actually, Vassal Street is a, is a um, P2P exchange platform with deals in buying and selling of cryptocurrencies, any type of cryptocurrency. That's what we, we do. And we've been in existence since 2017. That's like six years ago, and we are still standing strong. Awesome. Thank you. So you guys were able to surmount all the uh, ups and downs of the pandemic, the inflation, the censorship that has come from uh, monetary uh, authorities, uh, and you're still here since 2017. Kudos to you. Your business must be a multi-million dollar business. Tolu, uh -uh. throw some Is Bitcoin what? our way. <laughs> Good to have you here. So um, I want to uh, talk to you quickly. How is the Bitcoin business, the digital asset business, the cryptocurrency business you're doing, how, how lucrative is it? I know I've been through some of the things that you, you're doing online, and I see that USDT and Bitcoin are the most prominent. Why those two coins, and how is the business doing in general? Um, Bitcoin is a very lucrative business, if you really understand it. And currently, the way cryptocurrency in general is, um, people are so much in it right now compared to when we started. We started about six years ago, and there are, there are like few people that are into cryptocurrency. So the business was much more booming there than compared to right now. But glory be to God, everything is still moving on. And also, the reason why the P2P platform and the reason why we are still standing strong is because we we deal only on p2p it's quite different from um storage of cryptocurrency mm -hmm. you understand so Absolutely. when you when you when you have a platform that stores cryptocurrency that is another job entirely <laughs> you understand? But yeah you're you right need to, yeah. yeah you need to really secure your platform you need to work more on security than any other thing you understand yes. so that th yeah that is the reason why our own platform is much more easier to to, to operate and is friendly beautiful you understand? beautiful it's friendly to operate and that is that's much reason why we are we are still standing strong and we are active in the crypto world. I, and, and you can, as you can hear, Uchi and Ayabami, just like you said when you were talking about nodes, peer to peer, it's obvious that no organization, no government, no type of censorship can stop the movement of value, especially these cryptographic values mm -hmm. between. Person to person, mm -hmm. it's a different ball game when you custody, right? Then mm -hmm. that's putting so much problem mm -hmm. on that's yourself. Of yeah. So, what should we be doing as builders? Tolu is a founder of a Bitcoin business. He said it's lucrative, but for six years they've been doing well. You are a founder of an enabling platform, Chi Money, mm -hmm. that allows uh, digital assets and Bitcoin to be used as payments across border mm -hmm. you educate people on bitcoin tolu said something that there's a lot of people in the business right even though adoption is 
<laughs> to me, I think adoption is still in its nascent stage. Sure. Correct. Yeah. Sure. What should Nigerian government be taking seriously now that P2P is really, really, you know, connecting buyers and sellers and it's no longer news that it is effective. What should the government be doing to mitigate risk of scam? Um, also to ensure that there is a level playing field for the players that are truly into this such that we don't lose our market, our P2P market, because this P2P is usually done on apps, right? Mm -hmm. From one app to another. It might be different apps, you know? We don't lose our market to foreign businesses. Knowing what Bitcoin and most of these cryptocurrency are, how decentralized, semi-decentralized, less um, re restriction when they are moving, you know? So we don't want to be against the government, but we want to show them how we supposed to be so mm -hmm. and and this i'm sure the, the viewers will learn from I, i'll start from you uchi okay yeah for sure so you're the mind coach so i like to <laughs> let all of us talk <laughs> before you use your mind coach all right <laughs> all right go ahead my brother yeah so as we know p2p is unstoppable so regardless of what regulations that different governments would eneb enable it's basically unstoppable and people will still continue to do peer-to-peer -peer trading of digital assets. Mm -hmm. So it's best for, I mean, the users, for the regulators, and even the financial institutions to adopt and encourage and support uh, decentralization, crypto, Bitcoin, right? Because it's beneficial for increasing revenue, like we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Also, it's also good to protect users. And like uh, Lamy mentioned, if we want to own a share of the market, we want to create an enabling environment for builders to create solutions for our people, yeah. right? And by doing this, everyone wins, yes. right? Because P2P would continue, it's unstoppable. Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, Over to you, my brother. I, I'm going to take it from the point of where, where my impact has been so far for the past, let me say, seven years. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Chi talked about the aspect of building infrastructures, making it uh, something the government can use. Uh, I would say beyond building the products, which was a debate a little bit at African Bitcoin Conference, is most importantly to educate. Now, we build all the products that can possibly serve, let's let assume Nigeria. Don't even let us go West Africa, it's Nigeria. And these products are good. Yes, I know good products sell itself, yes. but there's some fundamental knowledge that is necessary so that you can understand that this thing is on blockchain technology and the way you interact with it is totally different from the way you interact with the... Your Naira. Your Naira and the likes of on it. On GT Bank. So, <laughs> UBA, Access Bank, Zeni uh, Bank. And, and that's like, Some of these and, banks and, are scared of like Bitcoin you. companies. <laughs> no, instead of, okay, okay let, let me digress a little bit. Uh, when, that, when that law was passed in regards to the bank not being involved in, I wish it was actually, oh, we banks are coming in to get a share or maybe 20%, they even say 10% of Nigeria reserve is in Bitcoin. That was about how many years ago. Possibly Bitcoin was around $10,000 or $13,000. Now, it and went, now, it went to $69,000. If we had bought, maybe if we had bought in our, uh, do you know how much the reserve would have grown? We would have paid right? almost all so, our debts. So, yeah. before any other thing, I, I, I would say education is key. If the government itself can be educated, first of all, then build products that enable transactions in Nigeria and um, making sure that infrastructure has been put in place in regards to the 10%. Uh, capital charge, right? Then everything flows easily. Mm -hmm. Flows easily. Uh, I will always double down on education because when okay, this is the second time I'm using that quote. When you know better, you do better, right? Absolutely. So Drop when you when you, when, you, when you know how to use Bitcoin right, I believe you will be the one to like just oh, I think this product is necessary at this point. Mm -hmm. I think this product is necessary at this point. Uh, can Nigerian government wake up one day and say, okay, 
Tolu, this is over to you. Do you think Nigerian government can wake up one day and say, we ban Bitcoin and then <laughs> everybody that owns Bitcoin in Nigeria will not have access to Bitcoin again? Is it ever possible? Uh, I, I actually don't think it's, it's possible because Bitcoin is decentralized in terms of like no one has the right to regulate it. No, you can regulate it, but no one has the right to control it. You understand? You can't ban it. So many countries in the world has once banned um, cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is a giant of all cryptocurrency right now. 100. Mm -hmm. You can say that again. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin is a giant of all cryptocurrency. <laughs> so, you know, we've, we've heard news from China and some other countries back then. They will, they will announce they, they want to ban Bitcoin, mm -hmm. they want to ban cryptocurrency, and at the end of the day, they will end up changing the story as well. Mm -hmm. But due to my own analysis... They will ban, I, they will ban themselves out of the opportunities Bitcoin provides. <laughs> you understand? So, due to my own analysis, analysis and the way I, I view all these things, is they want to announce to people that... They want to ban Bitcoin. So all these informations will affect cryptocurrency. You understand? Mm. So when it affects them, they will now buy at the lowest rate. <laughs> wow. Because of F FUD. The game so theory. They, they, so they, they, they intentionally create this FOMO. Mm. They create the FUD. And then and, they, and once, it, once, it, once, once the, the price dips, they intentionally quickly go and you know, yeah. absorb. Yeah. They stack up, right? Yeah. Yeah, you understand because yeah. um, China has announced this thing um, severally, and yeah. we all know that China is is the giant of all marketplace. Mm -hmm. So anytime they announce news like this, it affects cryptocurrency, but they end up buying more instead of maybe canceling it. You understand? They buy more and they buy more. So people now, I I realize that. There is no how anybody can ban it. Mm -hmm. Since United States, China are not able to ban it. <laughs> how come oh, like you, know? you understand? Oh so I have, and this is what is, is keeping some crypto enthusiasts. This is what is keeping them going because they know you no one can ban it. If you ban it in your country, they will if you want to ban it, then you ban internet. That's just the same. Woo! That's All right, you take a round of applause for that. You take a round of applause for that. If you want to ban Bitcoin, you want to ban the internet. It's more like you want to end yourself. You know, you it's, it's, it's so powerful. I hold your thoughts there, Tolu. I'm coming back to you. You have dropped gems. Everybody don't drop their own quote. You don't drop your own. I love it. Tolu said if you want to ban Bitcoin, <laughs> it's more like saying you want to ban the internet. You want to ban TCP. TCPIP, TCIP, mm. TCPIP, TCPIP, yes. TCPIP. Mm. yeah, yeah. Don't let me this. Don't let me skip my head. <laughs> it's funny how you cannot be successful doing that today. Mm -hmm. So let's come down to Nigeria. This is our country. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has tried to ban Twitter, now mm. X. Mm. Um, the outcome we know was very bad for the government. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, economy dwindle, asper the. Uh, the um, informal sector that you know generates its own revenue from digital communication, Current, digital trade. Yeah. So vendors and things like yes, that. Yes, and, and all of that, mm. you know. Uh, but they swept the business to a black market and people started using VPN. Mm -hmm. And we did have B VPN companies that that were doing great in Nigeria at the time. I can't mm. even count on one, two that could have benefited from that. Mm. So the Nigerian government ended up driving the business opportunity that they would have created for their own people to foreign companies. Sure. So, because so many VPN companies had millions of Nigerians just because they wanted to have access to Twitter sure. and they raised funds and, and decided you know, to become better in their own economy. Mm -hmm. And we lost a lot of money until Nigerian government found their way back on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So, anybody watching now will say, ah, they don't ban Bitcoin before. They go ban them again. Bitcoin is volatile. Bitcoin is this. What is, or what are those things that people should be looking out for if uh, they want to engage in 
cryptocurrencies. Um, should people be fearful of it being getting banned one day? Uh, should people um, should people even buy cryptocurrency at all? Is this thing something we're supposed to be discussing on national TV at all? This time around, I will start from you. All right, thank you for that, Lamy. Um, okay, we all were born into the age of internet. I yes. wish, okay, definitely some viewers, don't let me be partial, some viewers watching were born before the age if of internet. If you're a millennial like us. <laughs> like us. <laughs> Maybe Gen Z has. <laughs> internet is older than Gen Z has, but baby boomers are mostly older, older than, than internet. Of course. And the right. millennials, of course, internet and us are the same age. So, mm -hmm. internet and us is the same age. So, there's no way the internet should be too smarter than us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We created we built it, we built right? AI. So, sure. we should be able to do AI things. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mama. So, what I'm trying to say is, Internet came to make life better, mm -hmm. unless you want to live in the arcade world. Now, this is it. A time will come that Bitcoin will so be used that you ask yourself, why didn't I start earlier? Okay, but I'm going to come from this point as well. What I'm going to advise you if you're watching this and you are listening clearly, watching my, 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 my voice, all right? <laughs> this is it. Don't... Okay, let me share my story so that you can resonate properly. 2015, I got in, and I'm going to mention names because the likes of MMM and MMM World. Please, so mention MMM, they were a scam. <laughs> right? For me, I, when I got introduced to Bitcoin, I saw it as an investment without knowing it was a payment method that they were using so that they can stay anonymous, which is actually a good thing, right? Being anonymous. But the education, maybe possibly that is why I focus on education right now so that people don't make the same mistake I made. Mm -hmm. Right? So, when you're about getting started, first thing is, nobody's going to tell you to get started in MMM, sorry, Bitcoin, please. Nobody's going to tell you to get started in Bitcoin, and they are going to uh, they are going to be paying you maybe 3% per day. Then that's, that, then, that's MMM. Then that is, that, that is an investment. Nobody's going to come to you and say, come and invest in Bitcoin. You don't invest in Bitcoin. Mm -mm. You don't invest in Bitcoin. Right, you buy it. It's, own it's it. a currency it's, and own it. It's it's a, it's a it's an investment that you buy and own. And own. it's not like you're investing in Bitcoin. You, you you're not chasing to... after Bitcoin, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so you own it. So is it that you you want to choose to buy it and hold, right? Or you want to buy it and trade, do the arbitrage, uh, or you want to just put it on exchange and trade as well, right? So be careful when people come to you and say that, oh, we have a new shining thing in your face and uh, it's going to make you like 10x. Yeah. Now, the last I'm going to talk on, on, on this is, is, now, if something's going to be a part of you that is going to work long term, like they normally say, there is nothing good that just come in like that. Like, mm -hmm. just give you 10x or 100x in it just three days. It's too good to be true. Yeah. 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 So, See it as a currency that is going to be used on a long time. So when you're coming, you don't come in like, ah, I want to come and blow. All right? Mm -hmm. Come in and, oh, I want to use this on a long-term thing. Because it's going to be a currency that's going to be used globally over time. So I'm going to just take a pause on that and allow... So, so let, me, okay. let me also contribute to that. Let me help you drive some of those points home. Okay. I hear you saying that Bitcoin is beyond... Is, is beyond... Um, it's a currency, it's an asset. It's beyond what you should just buy and and don't do your research about. Sure. Because right, it's going sure. to be here for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be used for multiple purposes. Sure. And it falls into the asset class of of reserve reserve wealth. Wealth wealth reservation. Wealth mm -hmm. preservation. Co co correct me if I'm wrong. Now we are building a new government in okay now i'm going to use that word government just to no no just to explain it in details we already have every system working in the likes of medical system uh, medical industry financial industry educational industry and the likes of it now we're only just still touching a little glimpse of what is in the blockchain industry in the aspect of the cryptocurrency uh -huh. so as it is right now we're just looking into the financial aspect of the blockchain industry whereby we can still apply it in other sectors. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why it's so much in the faces of people right now is because it's the money. We right. need the money to apply to other sectors. For our sector. country. <laughs> For our country. <laughs> yeah. People are in poverty. And they need money. So, so, so when you keep Naira in the bank, your Naira is dipping all the time. All the time. That's why Bitcoin, cryptocurrency is a solution. Is, 
all over the place. Big people want to buy something that will preserve their wealth. And what and what and what can preserve their wealth when Bitcoin market cap is bigger than that bigger of the stock. stock exchange? Of course. You understand? What are you what are you buying that is already listed on the stock exchange? So there's over twenty five percent inflation in our country, mm -hmm. but then our government wants to tax Bitcoin. So. Uh, a lot of people are worried out there. They don't know what's true. They don't know mm. what's, what's not true. Uh, and that's why this show is here, to educate people. The fact sure. that we're speaking Bitcoin alone shows that there is something legit about this. There is nothing mm. illegit about this. Even right. though the, the JP Morgan man mm. went to the US Senate, I don't know if you saw that, I saw that too. and went to go and say something very uh, terrible yeah. uh, about himself, not mm. about mm -hmm. Bitcoin, because what he did was to expose himself and all of the fines that his bank mm -hmm. has gone through. I mean, JP Morgan Chase have been the, the, fined the, the, the same guy. multiple times. Yeah, in correct. The, well, yeah, this mm -hmm. bank's fraud happened. They mm -hmm. get fined so much. And you say Bitcoin is used for illicit mm -hmm. yeah, stuff. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. The blockchain is transparent. The Bitcoin blockchain is transparent. Mm -hmm. it's, right, it, yeah. I think it's pseudonymous. Mm -hmm. I may not be able to see your name, Uchi or mm -hmm. Ayobami, mm -hmm. but I can see your transaction. Sure. Which of the bank can allow us see their transactions today? I doubt. Any of the banks. These are wonderful um, technologies that they have built. Mm -hmm. But can they show us their book? Like, can I just check your app and see the transaction of everybody? Don't even let me see their names. <laughs> let me just see that billions, thousands. Millions flu. Too, yeah. Like, can we just see mm. so we can know that this balance you have, you say you have, you have it for real. So I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll modify the question mm -hmm. and ask you: Should people be scared about cryptocurrency? Should we be laying emphasis on this? Should be, should the government be taxing cryptocurrency? Mm. How how are we going to take away the risk, the fears? What should we be doing as a nation, as a people now? Yeah, so I'll start by saying that uh, people should not be scared of uh, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, especially if they've done their own research, right? So the transactions are transparent, mm -hmm. and uh, we can see that money is actually flowing in the Bitcoin network, mm -hmm. right? So what helps, or I guess I can, I can share my story how I got into the B uh, blockchain space. Please do that. So in, <laughs> it was 2015, 2016, and uh, I went to a conference in Toronto, Canada, and a random guy just approached me. I was like, download this wallet. I'm going to send you a few or a fraction of a Bitcoin. And I was like, hmm, is this wow. fraud or what? <laughs> so I downloaded the wallet. I think it was called Jazz Wallet or something. And then I downloaded it and it sent me uh, a fraction of a Bitcoin. And when I go home, I started reading into like Bitcoin and how it worked. Mm -hmm. I saw like how it rose from uh, over 2,000 Bitcoin or so being used to buy one pizza to like mm -hmm. now that, that, that value of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. about 10,000. <laughs> yeah, 10,000. lost a lot yeah. of money. <laughs> so, and how like the value has grown from basically nothing to over... 50,000 and it keeps growing and growing. And I'm like, okay, this technology here, I'm a, I'm a developer, I'm a tech person. So I looked at the, the white paper, I looked at the nice. code. It's nice. open source. You can see like how everything is implemented. There's nothing hidden about it. Yeah, it's not hidden, right? So you can see like that this is, this works. The, the, technology, is work, the technology works, it's solid. So I think everyone should, uh, although this is not investment advice, but uh, people should trust uh, the tech mm. because numbers don't lie. Okay. Mm. Uh, one plus one would always be two anywhere you go in the world, even, yeah. in, even in mass. Yes. Right? So, yeah, we should trust the tech and also we should trust that uh, once we've done our research and also if we're doing like the non-custodial or like buying Bitcoin and holding it ourselves without storing it in an exchange, that we're all, always going to hold or on that Bitcoin, yeah. regardless of Super what happens, story. right? That's regardless right. of the regulators, regardless of whatever happens, yes. we, we own that. Yes, and like they say, not yeah. your keys, not your coin. If mm -hmm. you know how to keep your Bitcoin off the exchange, you own it forever. Correct, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you own it forever. But when it comes to like the education side of things, when we're talking about adoption, I think there is this concept that, I mean, concept of utility, right? The usefulness of Bitcoin in the real world. And I think that for us to get to a point where uh, Bitcoin is fully non-custodial, we have to start somewhere. And 
that compromises the compromise between full decentralization. I know, and I, I know, I know, I know. You might have like different opinions about this, <laughs> but <laughs> and compliance. Yeah, I yeah. I there's mean, a compromise between like full decentralization and compliance, right? So yeah, it's very important because lots of everyday users they don't want to worry about private keys. Like yes, they don't know what private keys is. They just want to open an app, log in with their username and password, send a transfer, and that's why things like a uh, universal money address. It's like built on with Bitcoin. It's it's been launched, so yes. it's an open source way to receive Bitcoin in an address that is similar to an email. Yeah, yeah. fully awesome. open source and things like that. So we're gonna start like with that compromise of compliance. Well, that's uh, a new product you just mentioned. Yeah, it's a new product. Yeah, it's open source. It's built by uh, the folks at in Block, and uh, there's a Nigerian company part of it also, oh. Bitnob. Oh, so it's like oh a yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Like is owned by uh, Bennett Power. Yeah. Right? So it's uh -huh. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, oh, really? Oh, block. Is that block? You're talking about block from uh, Jack yeah. Dorsey? Block? Yeah. So it's like a cons consortium. Oh, yeah. yeah. Between uh, Bitnob and some other folks. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, the guy that worked at, that worked on uh, uh, Facebook's uh, big is it Bira or Lira stuff? There's a guy that oh, yeah. yeah, I can't remember yeah. his name. Ma something Ma David Marcos. Okay. So he started a new company. And they build something called the Universal Money Address. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, so you oh, can wow. receive your Bitcoin to oh, that. Oh, right. All right. I'm, I'm going to check that out. Yeah, That's it's new, right? That's it's, pretty it's new. new. It's, it's pretty new, yeah. Oh, so awesome. This, I'm yeah. Check. Oh, shout yeah. out to Ben Power and whatever he's doing with Beating Up. I love that. Yeah. Great. Okay, so um, thank you for that information. Mm -hmm. Real quick, we still have Tolu. Tolu, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, you know, the time flies when you are really enjoying uh, the education of Bitcoin yeah, from intellectuals like this. Tolu. Yeah. Um, before you go, because we don't have enough time, you're from the diaspora, right? I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think the Nigerian government should do? And how should we, our people, embrace digital assets? What, sh what should the Nigerian government do uh, to embrace digital assets for economic growth? And what should the people also do? Talking from a Nigerian in the diaspora, in the UK right now, yeah, um, I think the number one thing and the most important thing... You have just about 60 seconds, please. Oh, okay. The most important thing the government needs to do is to first adopt cryptocurrency. You understand? If you don't adopt it, you can't, you can't explain anything to people. What you don't, what you, you don't do, there's no how you can tell, okay, now, the way I am, if I don't do cryptocurrency, how can I explain to people to, to come into cryptocurrency? So there should be a kind of awareness, you understand? And like encouragement for people to join um, cryptocurrency because there are so many benefits in, crypto, in, in the crypto world compared to, to our traditional um, banking system. But I don't want to go into that because there are so many differences, you understand? But Absolutely. the first thing we need to do is the government need to like um, inform the people and create awareness about cryptocurrency. You know, you, I don't know. Um, was that like maybe two years ago? The government tried to initiate their own um, digital money. Yes, the work. central bank digital currency. <laughs> do you want to talk about that? <laughs> that will take another one hour. Let me hold your thoughts. Oh, okay. Hold your thoughts. <laughs> hold your thoughts, Tolu. Don't worry. That, I'm going to bring you back so we can talk about that because that's a long one. That's a competition for crypto. <laughs> that yeah. The government thinks they're putting in place. And they did not consult us to so tell them the truth. But it's okay. Um, it's, it, it's so sad that time has been fast spent. But I thank you guys for coming. I would like to hear you your last words in a few seconds. We still have about three minutes. Uh, in a few seconds. Um, uh, do you think Nigeria and Africa can have some economic gains? Can there be positive economic impacts from Bitcoin, digital assets, cryptocurrency, from the blockchain technology itself? Real quick, you and then you. 30 well, seconds. I'll refer back to the story I shared earlier. <clears throat> Imagine being, I being able to help somebody with his processing of visa, which took like two days, and he had to meet me first. What if I was not the middleman, which what blockchain, Bitcoin is about? What does that do? Efficiency in time. Yes. And what does efficiency in time does? It gives back in productivity. Yes. That helps the productivity of the country, the continent. Absolutely. And over time, it builds the continent to become 
uh, a go-to continent, which we are, we are, but we need to be uh, efficient in some key ways. So I'm very sure it's going to be, an, it's going to enable us to do better. I love that. Let me connect what you said with what Tolu said, right? Tolu said the government should adopt Bitcoin, which means that Bitcoin can even be used to pay tax. That ten percent sure. tax you want to take. Mm. Last words, Uchi. We gotta go. So I'll say Bitcoin is the new oil. So let's treat it as as uh, let's give it a, as much push and as much support as well as we're pushing uh, crude oil today. Awesome. Thank awesome. you very much. You heard that Bitcoin is the new oil. Let's give it as much push as we're giving anything that can boost our economy. I remain Uluwa Shegun Uriafe Koshimani, and that has been Digital Assets Show for this episode for this week. Catch us same time next week. It's going to be another educational show. I love you all. Thank you, Pop Central. Thank you to my production team. Okay. We're going to be here next week. Don't go nowhere. Do your own research. Do not buy coin. I enter Wahala. <laughs> go research. Oh, don't yeah. say I, I didn't tell you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.